Today's topic is really an exciting one. Uh, it is called an emerging technologist. I'm pretty sure most of you would have heard this term some way or the other. So now I think it's time to know exactly what it is, what's the nuances behind it, and uh, get to know a little bit more about emerging technologies which is coming in. So that being said, let's move on. So before I start talking anything further, a little bit about myself. Uh, I work in an MNC as a QA and a performance architect. I have about 15 years of IT experience. Um, I also do technical writing. I do write for a couple of uh, uh, the article streams like a media and uh, article blizz. And I'm also a speaker. I go to uh, certain events. I do speak, uh, give speeches on uh, information technology. So that is where my expertise are. And uh, I've also founded a group called American Association of IT Professionals. It is available in LinkedIn. Um, as we speak, we are about 570 members strong. Um, please go ahead and enroll yourself. Uh, that's the group where we normally talk more about uh, the latest IT trends, uh, what's going on, the latest webinars, and uh, uh, any discussion will be posted there. Uh, we have something really exciting coming up. Uh, we will be starting to do some journals. We would need some uh, people to contribute to it. You will get a good opportunity to uh, be featured in a lot of journals which will be circulated across multiple media. So do check out that. So first things first, what is emerging technologies? I'm pretty sure most of you would have heard this. Most of you would have come across this and uh, something will be running in your mind. So do anyone wants to ping in a chat and say what emerging technologies is according to them? Yeah, if you're if you're thinking about emerging technologies could be something related to cloud, something related to blockchain, something uh, more to do with 3D printing, uh, then you're definitely in the right direction, I would say. Because emerging technologies is something which is slowly emerging, but it has not been completely utilized up to its full potential. That's what uh, basically forms an emerging technology. Um, so the good thing about emerging technology is the underlying technology might come and go. You, they'll always be replaced. But the term emerging technology will always be trending. It will be something always have a lot of importance and uh, buzz around it. So if I have to give you a quick uh, definition of emerging technology, that is something which we scale it as, uh, which is something booming, which is about to boom in technology, but it is not properly uh, utilized. So emerging technologies are the one where most of R&D, uh, most of investment from the big companies will go in. Um, so, so this is the area to be in. So if you are in IT, I would definitely encourage you to get yourself uh, knowledgeable around this uh, and plan your uh, future skill set around this. The reason being emerging technologies are the one which will draw you a lot of attention and jobs and salaries and so. Um, so cyber security is one, chaos engineering is one. So these things are picking up fast. So if you are future certified or skill set is around this, definitely you have a lot more chances of succeeding. So I know when we talk about emerging technologies, everyone has a different take on it. If you talk about um, talking about automobile, you will have EV, electric vehicles are uh, leading there as emerging technologies. If you talk about um, a blockchain, you can talk about neural networking, you can talk about 3D printing, Internet of Things. So there are plenty of them. Uh, if you talk in healthcare, you have a lot of emerging technology specific to the patient behavior and uh, printing specific uh, medicinal uh, equipments directly in hospital. So the moment you talk about a different uh, structure or a different area, so the emerging technology varies. Uh, since we are in IT, we will focus on a few of the very important ones which is uh, ruling at this point. So in this in this session, we'll be talking about uh, these few of them, and we will start from talking about AIML, then we will move on to robotic process automation, and then we will move on to edge computing, uh, then it is going to be quantum computing. Uh, we will talk about virtual reality, augmented reality, and also 5G technology. 
So in today's session, we're going to touch upon all this and get some basic understanding of what these technologies are and uh, what is the future aspects of this. So artificial intelligence. So this is very interesting and one of the topic which is resonates really well with everyone. Uh, it is it is a buzzword. It has been overly used at this point. So AI is basically more of having a machine having an intelligence of a human. So if you have to call a humanoid robot, uh, Sophia is one good example, which has been uh, brought up as as close to human behavior as possible. So the machine will have intelligence as close to human and will be able to independently uh, take decisions, perform actions, which we do. So that is called as an artificial intelligence. And um, so in recent interview, Sophia was also interviewed in one of the news channels. So this is how much we have progressed when it comes to artificial intelligence. And if you want to know a little bit more, there are four types. Uh, it starts with reactive uh, machines. Uh, the first one is uh, very basic. If you have any question or if you want anything, there is be a response back. So it will be more of reactive. There won't be anything um, uh, done from the machine itself. So the next layer is limited memory. This is where you have, you go to a machine, have a question, or if you want to talk about uh, any specific problem, machine will have a limited set of information or a memory. So if it is false under that, the machine will be able to interact back with you. Uh, the third type is a theory of mind. This is where we are going more towards uh, intelligence. Theory of mind is where um, you have all the required tools from the machine. It can interact with you. It can slowly uh, be start being as close to human as possible. And the final type is self-awareness. So this is the ultimatum. This is what everyone is trying to achieve. Uh, if, it, if we achieve that, then it will be as good as uh, a robot can do anything uh, equally good as human or even beyond. So self-awareness is the ultimatum, which we have not yet accomplished at this point. Um, so we will move on to machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. Uh, it's one step down. So when we say machine learning, it's very basic and straightforward. You are teaching machine. You are, a machine is learning from its experiences and uh, it is trying to give you an output. That is how uh, it is going to work. So let's take a very simple example. If you are talking to a kid and if you want to teach that kid um, what is an apple and what is a strawberry, uh, it sort of looks the same, sizes are a little different, the color is same. So the way you do it is first you're going to talk to the kid and show a different kinds of apple and then you move on to show a different kinds of strawberries so that um, a child can understand the differences between these two uh, in terms of look, in terms of feel, in terms of um, how it tastes, etc. So that's when it will start automatically categorizing it into strawberries and into apple. So this is a very simple example. So the moment you have reached that, the very next time, whenever you give an apple or a strawberry, the kid will be able to easily differentiate it without any additional input. So one such uh, view is, let's say if you're categorizing a dog or a cat, so based on whatever inputs you have given before, uh, the machine will try to map it back and see if it falls anywhere close to what I've already learned. And if it falls under there, then it'll automatically categorize it. So this is very useful when it comes to, you want to have a data analytics um, when you want to predict something. So this is very useful at that point. So there are three major types of algorithms which is normally used. One is supervised learning. Supervised is when you give an input or an output and you teach the machine, this is exactly what you need to say this output. Uh, unsupervised is where um, a machine has to go a step further when it doesn't have enough data points to uh, decide. Still, it has to take some decision of its own and without being supervised and uh, telling what exactly needs to happen. Um, so still some decisions are made that is unsupervised. Uh, the last one is reinforcement. So this is where you don't have enough data, uh, but you still have to make decision. It is more of uh, a goal driven. Um, so here machine will try to take a decision based on what should be the desired outcome. So based on what needs to be achieved, 
the decision will be made from the machine. So this is how the machine learning and AI works. Um, let's talk about another interesting uh, technology, which is robotic process automation. Um, knowingly or unknowingly, wantedly or unwantedly, I'm pretty sure all would have been part of this uh, RPA process. Um, if I have to give uh, one quick example, um, so if you, if you have used your phone or if you have used a chat feature in in banking application or any application, usually you will be normally greeted with uh, robotic text and it will try to solve your problems first. It will ask you, uh, it will try to gather your information. It will ask you what you need to do, how I solved your problem. Do you really need someone else, a uh, human to come and talk to you in the chat? So this is the process uh, which is very mundane. This is a process which uh, pretty much can be solved without uh, human intervention, most of them. So what you try to do is you group them, try to form a solution and try to approach this uh, from a robotic point of view. So all this work is done. Uh, you really do not have to uh, sit in front of it. You can teach the machine to say, if you have a question, ask X, Y, Z, and if you get this response, try to resolve it in this way. So what you're doing is any regular task in the technology, you are trying to automate the process itself. So that way uh, it is much more easier for you uh, to handle the process and definitely doesn't require any breaks or anything. You can keep it running 24 by seven. So it's very much more efficient these days. So RPA process is all about that. Um, edge computing is the next emerging technology. So I'm pretty sure all would have at least heard about IoT, Internet of Things, uh, where you have a lot of devices these days, be it from your Apple Watch to uh, any micro sensors. Um, so what will happen is all these small machineries or all these small gadgets will start collecting a lot of information. It has to process it. So now you need much more capability to process uh, all this data and response back in a split second. So cloud technology is already everywhere as you know it's a centralized location where computing happens so it's in the cloud um, there is a one level down which is called fog uh, it is sort of blurring the distance between edge and cloud what fog does is instead of having one centralized cloud data centers you sort of split them into multiple data centers and spread it across so individual computing happens in that region without going to the main data center so this way you're distributing the load and also distributing the risk. Uh, so edge, let's talk about edge. So imagine you have a smart lock um, or imagine you have a, a door lock, which is a fingerprint enabled. And uh, let's say if all the data, all the passcode, all the information is authentication is stored in the cloud. And uh, if you are trying to get into your home and uh, for some reason, cloud uh, interaction, there is a lot of latency uh, if there is uh, the cloud infrastructure is on for whatever X, Y, Z reason, you are not able to communicate to your data center, then you won't be given access to go inside your own home. So that's very, uh, very difficult situation to deal with. So the even a split second or even a couple of seconds will matter. Uh, imagine if you're driving your car and it has a self-driving capability if it has to apply brakes it has to uh, take decision in split second uh, in in terms of any accident so there are sensors there are sensor data which is processed so it cannot have any latency at that point everything has to be done over the edge when we say edge it's nothing but it is done almost close to the machine itself the device itself without any latency or as close to the zero latency as possible. So instead of giving an example, um, if I have to go back, so instead of having it all the authentication of your uh, fingerprint lock done in cloud, imagine all that capability is built into your uh, lock itself. So the data, the computing, authentication, all that is done inside your lock with a chip or some software designed. Uh, so then you really don't have any need to communicate anywhere else. Uh, you are not dependent on the external um, signal strength or uh, how far you can connect. So now computing happens in the device and you will be given access. Same with the car. Um, so the computing power or computing is happening inside the car itself. Within a split second, it can take a decision. It has to apply brake, it will. 
if it starts to accelerate it will so this decision needs to happen uh, at the edge of where the machine or device or software is so this is called edge uh, computing um, this is much more getting evolved as we go this is one area definitely uh, there will be a lot of research and development done there will be a lot of investments done on this i'm already seeing these days be it a smart lock or your wifi plugs uh, everything is done within the device itself so you rarely have to have any centralized um, computing to happen as long as you connect to the wifi uh, the device can do everything um, on premise itself so that's all about edge computing let's talk a little bit on quantum computing because all the big companies are are chasing behind this and everyone wants a piece of it uh, microsoft is one big um, player who is developing into quantum computing so to to speak that in a very simple terms quantum computing um, is a sort of a computer which has a capability to do hundreds or thousands of times a complex uh, solutions or calculations uh, can it can take up any number of uh, issues and it can solve it with this uh, mathematical uh, approach which cannot be done with normal computer at all we have heard about supercomputers we have heard about um, vastly used computers which with high computing but quantum computing is a different ball game altogether so what it does is it uses uh, something called as a quantum mechanics uh, the it has a concept of super positioning and entanglement uh, of processing the data um, so the more you will you'll be able to achieve the quantum computing ultimatum the other computers computing power can also be improved so quantum computing is all about that um, in simple terms it's it's doing a lot and lot of complex calculation solutions which a normal computer cannot do at any given point so uh, let's move on to something more interesting uh, virtual reality uh, either you would have seen it in youtube or anywhere people are playing with their headsets on and uh, you would see that um, if you go to any mall these days they have a 4d uh, uh, rights where you will be able to completely be in a virtual environment and enjoy so basically virtual reality is creating a reality virtually which is not um, not real uh, so you try to either via headset or helmet or being completely in that uh, virtual environment you create an environment of your choice if these days when it comes to gaming these days when it comes to uh, attending meetings uh, meta is one such uh, big player who is widely uh, they are they are investing billions in in metaverse so what it does is you will be able to go switch your character you can attend meetings from wherever you are you really do not have to be in that uh, location at all so you can be uh, in your home but you can virtually be present with someone else in in some other environment altogether so uh, so this is virtual reality it has no limitations uh, gaming uh, productivity or hospitals or meetings anywhere and now after the pandemic since everyone is moving into work from home this has picked up a lot virtual reality is it's going to enter our lives pretty much uh, as we have as as we have the smartphones and the TVs which is done so look forward to it there will be very exciting uh, new things happening in the virtual reality space so if you take a notch further then you will get into augmented reality so augmented reality is something where you do not create everything virtually um it is not fake or you take what is real what is around you and try to add a virtual element of on top of it uh, if you have seen in news some some time back uh, there was a lot of craze of a pokemon game and everyone was running around and trying to find the characters and if you have uh, used recently any of the ikea or any big furnitures online so they do give an option where you can scan your room and you can select any furniture it will automatically place it on on your room or in the space you have scanned so it is sort of giving you a, a reality feel even though you're not there so that way you will be able to make a good judgment and uh, the reality is still possible with within the limits 
So one such um, information I would like to show is when one of the pool uh, companies recently, they were trying to do this. Um, so even in games, at athletics, or all of them are trying to use the augmented reality. Uh, I would like to play that again. So the pool will show you how, where you, if you hit in a specific location or a particular angle, how your stroke would change, where it would hit and where it will land. So imagine having this sort of capability when you're playing and how much it might help you to improvise on your game. So similarly, um, the augmented reality do not have any limitations. It can go as much as possible these test companies and uh, all the big players are investing heavily on augmented reality. Um, I've used an app called Yelp. Um, you just place your phone around. It will show you it in the direction where your restaurants are. Even Google does that. So it's more of a 3D object placed in, in uh, the real, uh, real world for you. So yeah, that's more exciting. Um, so let's talk about uh, the final um, emerging technology we, we wanted to hit on today. So 5G, fifth, uh, fifth generation. So there is a lot of buzz around it and uh, there is a lot many interest around it. So the way we are interacting or consuming data is, is changing very, very rapidly. Um, before we had 3G, 4G, whatever we could do, it has gone leaps and bounds. Um, so what 5G does is it sort of use a OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. It's a little complex. It, it basically it's try to distribute the signal across multiple uh, channels so that it can be much more efficient and there is no interference or latency between it. So what it enables it to do is to have a uh, hundred times, thousand times faster speed compared to what we have seen so far. So I've taken an example of one of the uh, movies, standard two hour worth of movie. If you have to download it with your 3G speed, it's gonna take about 12 hours. Compare that to 4G, which is 10 minutes and compare that to 5G, that is three seconds, because you can go as high as 10 gigabit uh, per second. So this is the speed we are talking about. This is the technology we are growing towards. And uh, one such example is this, you can see already there are countries, there are people embraced 5G. Um, even in US, uh, Verizon, Qualcomm, and AT&T, beat any of them are already investing big on 5G. And you will see a lot of uh, advertisement already being made around 5G. So yeah, 5G technology is going to be big. It's coming to us. So it will help you the way we spoke about quantum edge computing and cloud computing, all of this to happen, we need speed and the data transfer to happen, which much more efficiently. So that's when these things will make it enable for us. So I, we did conduct one quick survey uh, from our uh, LinkedIn group. So our intention was to see what would people think will explode more in, in future. Uh, we grouped it because we could only select four uh, possible options. And this was the result, interesting one. Um, I see people still have tendency to think AI ML robotics is gonna uh, explore even more in future. And after that, we will have more of virtual and augmented reality, it will take place. Edge is computing, quantum computing, 5G um, got only 5%. But um, I, would, I would say, still look out because I know we may not be coming across these terms a lot um, in, in software industry, but still these are going to be really big. Um, so this was interesting and uh, the survey is still open. Probably we will post the results um, later. Um, so that's being said, uh, thank you so much. We wanted it to be a quick uh, discussion. Hope you got some value out of it. You got some understanding out of it. Um, so do check out the association page we have created in LinkedIn. Um, it's, it's, it's really helpful. Um, we would, should be much more collaborative. If you have any questions, if you need any, uh, if you want to chat about this topic or anything else, feel free to, uh, post a comment or I have given my Instagram, sorry, I have given my LinkedIn link, uh, feel free to uh, hit me up, uh, send a connection request.